with uh, self-determination then, when we consider uh, local indigenous communities gaining control of their own voice, they reassert the lifeway relationships embedded in indigenous knowledge between people, places, land, biodiversity, ancestors, and spiritual presences. In this sense, self-determination is less of a political assertion by Native American leaders and more of an affirmation of the voice of the community in determining their own futures, gaining control, regaining control of indigenous knowledge by local communities, reasserts relationships of a particular people with places, lands, animals, plants, ancestors, and spiritual presences. Sovereignty calls out the deeper values in this voice of indigenous peoples in reasserting relationships that have been muted, lost, or stolen. Sovereignty is typically associated with a political consciousness linked to treaty agreements and the re-examination of those broken agreements and the, the recognition of distinct native peoples as nations within the United States and Canada. While these political actions are very significant and they're widespread among Native American elders and leaders, there is also a sense that nations applies not only to humans but also to plants, insects, animals, clouds, atmosphere, and all of the distinct families of the living earth community. Thus sovereignty for Native thinkers constantly challenges uh, communities towards new ways of understanding their relationships with the surrounding world. We might call this the challenge of context and definition of sovereignty. That is, as soon as we try to impose a strict definition on sovereignty, for example, as the voice of indigenous peoples to reassert relationships that have been muted, lost, or stolen, immediately questions arise about which people and what place. Two examples then, the examples that we've already mentioned uh, of the drum and storytelling help to clarify this relational knowing embedded in self-determination and sovereignty. When we consider the drum, such as in this drum group here, we have positioned the drum as a living presence in Native American religion. Its sound can be likened to a religious ecology. That is, its very nature is connected with others in a meaningful way. In this uh, drum group, this uh, circular symbol making is evident in the drum symbolism, but also uh, as the community of uh, players reaches out to the community of listeners. So we have uh, the amplification of groups extending out into the nation of existent beings. So self-determination is the shared voice of these interacting, intersecting communities. And sovereignty arises as the values that pervade these uh, interactions and they give vitality to this act. These then are the voice, values, and knowing uh, also found in oral storytelling. We have this charming image here of a, a father uh, transmitting the stories to his son and uh, imaging them on a buffalo hide. And the relational sound that we saw in the drum is uh, amplified by the act of storytelling the breath of one's body becomes the drumming and the transmission of this interaction with uh, the listener. It's according to many Native American traditions then that stories have their own life and so the, the father imparting the telling is imparting a life to his son also. The storyteller gives expression through her voice, his body, their gestures, to that storied being, so also the listening audience participates in that creation of relational knowing. 
This is the symbolic act of giving rise to thought in the next generation. The point here is that self-determination and sovereignty arise in all of the uncertainty and ambiguity of the story. This serves to remind us, and it, it uh, reminds us how stories are embedded in the dyna dynamic relationships of life. Stories and percussive sound serve to bind relationships, not simply as experiences, but as ways of knowing.